it's it's tough because I grew up watching Next Gen. And then when I was an adult, I watched all of Deep Space Nine. And I, I think I it's kind of tough for me because like TNG, Deep Space Nine, and Voyager, they're like a set for me. They're like the the shows that were airing, you know, right. when I was when I was still living at home with my folks when I was a kid, and they were all a comfort zone for me, you know. But I I'm a Jordy and Data guy, like that's who I grew up loving. And and honestly, rewatching Deep Space Nine as an adult, that's when I truly understood how great it was. Um, I think when I was a kid, Deep Space Nine, I loved Odo, and obviously I loved Jake, and I loved the kid access points on Deep Space Nine. Like, <laughs> Odo in a bucket, I was like, yeah, sign me up, let's go. And, <laughs> you know, as an adult, I was like, oh, the Jem'Hadar and the Dominion War and all this cool kind of serialized stuff. Like, I think when I was a kid and when I wasn't in charge of when I got to watch TV, I was seeing that more piecemeal. But when you get to binge all of Deep Space Nine, you're like, all oh, right, this show's fucking awesome. Like this show gets it, you know. So, uh, so yeah, it's probably TNG first, Deep Space Nine second. But you know, I love all that era. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it kind of shows. Uh, it feels like um, Lower Decks is kind of an homage to uh, Next Generation, which is my favorite series. Although I will say that I think that Deep Space Nine's probably the most superior product of all of the, I mean, just the writing is just unbelievable. I mean, it's just the best writing in my opinion, but next generation is kind of the one that, that grabbed my heart first. And it seems like lower decks is an homage to that. Or do you feel like it's more of an homage to all of star Trek or specifically like the, the three nineties star Trek series? It's funny when I was first pitching uh, lower decks, I didn't know. And actually I didn't even get to pitch it at first. It was really just came from a conversation I had with, with Kurtzman and the other and the other secret hideout folks, is I didn't know what I was going to get to play with because I was watching Discovery and I knew Picard was on the way, and I was like, my dream was to reverse time and get to do one more TNG era show, mm-hmm. and I was like, but are they going to let me do that? So for a while, I was trying to get used to the thought that like Lower Decks might have to be a, a show about Star Trek that took place during the Disco era, and I was wrapping my head around that because I. I like Discovery, but I, I like live and breathe TNG. Like I get, like I can talk about TNG like it happened to me because I grew up watching it and seeing it so much. <laughs> and, and it felt like it would have been a little bit more of a challenge to do my own kind of version of Lower Decks in the Discovery era. But then, you know, in conversations with them, when I found out that I got to create a new ship, a new Starfleet ship in 2380 and... And that I got to use kind of some of the visual lexicon of that era and that kind of storytelling, like that. Yeah, you know, my first my first inclination was, what is my TNG ship? What feels like, you know, on on lower decks the stars are the are the ensigns, right? And so for that to work, part of what's helpful is that the bridge crew is really recognizable because we're not spending a lot of time with them. Mm-hmm. So I wanted you to get from like a thousand yards away, what the bridge crew is all about, what the captain's like, what her first officer's like, you know, what her head of security's like. Those are broad strokes characters. And the characters that are our leads that have more facets that are, you know, that at least at the very get-go are the ones that we are building out are the ensigns. And so taking that TNG sort of vibe and putting that bridge crew together, you know, D Space Nine is complex. And TNG had to be like, hey, this is new Star Trek this isn't TOS, but it's got aspects of it that are going to be familiar. D Space Nine got to be its entirely own thing. Like it's it's not even on a Federation station, you know, mm-hmm. like that's really cool. But you kind of don't get that without TNG. And so those elements of familiarity with TNG are what I built the Cerritos kind of loosely around. That being said, there's something that's so like we're constantly in the writer's room talking about how can we get onto D Space Nine? What's gonna make sense? And we saw it for a second in a flashback this first we season. Did. We did. And I'm always like, I feel like Mariner would love Quark. Like she would just get, like <laughs> totally. they would get blitzed and wake up somewhere and have to find their key. Like there are entire <laughs> movies about other people. Like, like Quark and Mariner could be trying to get to a White Castle or dudes where my caring. You know what I mean? Like they, I feel like they would be to some extent simpatico. Um, and you know, as we've been going, especially because we've, it's hard for me to write. I've got all of season two written as well uh, and that we're working on for Lower Decks and the first season is kind of like we're playing the hits like let's do our trial episode let's do our version of a movie 
let's do a plague on the ship. Uh, let's, you know, let's do all these things that, that, that I love that feel like familiar area for next gen stories. But then second season, we start to bridge into D space nines type stories and Voyager type stories. And, and even like an enterprise type story, like what's lucky for me comedically is that there's so much material to, to love and to dive into that, that on another Star Trek show, on a dramatic Star Trek show, you look at all these 700 episodes of Star Trek and it's kind of like, well, fuck, what the fuck are we supposed to do? You know, like everything's been done. Wait, am I allowed to swear on this podcast, by the way? I think so. Oh, yeah. Ciroc's okay, got sorry. a filthy mouth. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a reporter, you know. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, when you're writing a dramatic Star Trek, it's like you don't want to tread territory that people have already seen, right? But for us, because we're looking at it from a different angle, those existing episodes become mythologically broad existing things for us to use and look at in a different way. And so first season, yes, it's a lot of TNG. But as second season, we start to delve into other mythologically broad areas. And hopefully if we get picked up for more seasons, we'll just, you know, we'll have all of this material that we keep getting to kind of explore and be like, well, what would the Lower Deckers have been doing during that? Mm. 